Hello everyone and welcome to the Vortex where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris coming to you from the 2014 March for Life in Washington, D.C. As you witness the roughly half million marchers go streaming by on Constitution Avenue on their way to the U.S. Supreme Court, all appears very impressive. Despite being ignored by virtually every secular media outfit there is, this is the largest march or demonstration every year in the United States. So from the outside, everything seems good. Hundreds of thousands of mostly young, mostly Catholic marchers braving the absolutely bitter Arctic temperatures and wind to make their case for saving babies from the murderous grasp of abortionists, pro-abort politicians, and the culture of death. Uh, but what many in the pro-life movement either don't know or don't want to admit the extent of is just how much the culture of death has already made deep inroads into the lives of these marchers. There is a slaughter of the young going on that makes abortion seem like a walk in the park. As we reported the past couple of days, official polls and our own on-the-ground unscientific surveys reveal that a high number of these mostly young, mostly Catholic pro-lifers have already compromised and waffled on the issues of contraception and homosexuality. As we reported yesterday, close to one-third of them accept the use of contraception and a fifth accept the evil of homosexually active relationships. The culture of death is too well represented here at the March for Life, another one of those realities that many people will want to kill the messenger for, saying out loud, and other people will want to deny and spin and stick their heads in the sands about. In fact, many will probably say, oh, there goes that church TV again with all their gloom and doom. Shout out to the Church of Nice Gang. We didn't create the conditions of the doom and gloom. We just trap and expose it. You created the conditions with your hapless feel-good sermons and refusal to accept the reality that your approach to the diabolical, which is to deny it or ignore it or even make friends with it and dialogue with it, has resulted in a massive collapse of the faith and betrayal of these young souls. Imagine plunging into a crowd of supposed militant pro-lifers, and you have to have a certain militancy to bear these Arctic temperatures, and finding that huge numbers of them support contraception and homosexual relationships, physically active relationships. So let's put that in perspective, shall we? About 500,000 marchers marched up Constitution Avenue here. That means 100,000 of them, in addition to being opposed to the slaughter of children, are also accepting of homosexual partners being in relationships, and 175,000 of them are okay with contraception. And this is the future? The young have not been protected. Even in pro-life circles, they have not been properly protected. They have been left to the bitter winds of culture, which seeks to rip them away from the truth and loving embrace of God. 90%, perhaps more, of these marchers are Catholic. Can it be the case that their bishops back home don't know that they are losing the young, even these young? And when you lose these young people, it's game over, brother. A tipping point isn't being reached. It was reached and passed many years ago. Now we're watching the final unraveling of a culture built on life and love. And the great irony is we're watching the unraveling here at the March for Life. Catholics, laity, and clergy, how much longer are we going to allow this to continue? Bishops, when are you finally going to cooperate with the graces dispensed to you by the Queen of Heaven and stand up and defend her offspring that you have been given charge over? As these little ones slip through your fingers, the flames of your own damnation intensify. Priests, you have greater than usual access to these young souls. When are you going to risk your own popularity with them and stand up for Jesus Christ and all his truth, especially the hard truths? You must confront this growing evil in your parishes or your souls also slide further down the road to perdition, despite some of your fellow famous clergy denying such a possibility. And my fellow laity, are you insane? Have you lost all sense of what it is to be Catholic, which means to go out and save the world? We are all going to be held account for letting these children fall away. 
We've been deluding ourselves for a long time here, thinking that if we fight to save the physical lives of unborn children, that we can just not pay attention to the spiritual lives of the already born children. All this must change, or the punishment that will be meted out from God will be terrifying indeed. Reporting to you from the March for Life 2014, wrapping up our coverage here, I'm Michael Voris. God love you. Contraception. 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 Do you use it? Do you use it? How pro-life are you? Do you use it? How pro-life are you? are you condoms the pill the patch the ring have you used them how pro-life are you the shot iud diaphragm vasectomy how pro-life are you emergency contraception emergency contraception emergency contraception do you use it the morning after pill plan b one step are you 486 have you used them how pro-life are you how pro-life are you in 1930 in 1930 1930 in 1930, at the Lambeth Conference, after 20 years of intense pressure from international movers and shakers like the Rockefellers, the Church of England, the Anglicans, reversed nearly 2,000 years of Christian teaching on marriage and family and approved contraception. And approved contraception. Approved contraception. And approved contraception. The results. The results. The results. The results. The results are destroyed families, destroyed marriages, adultery, the objectification of women, pornography addiction, and most importantly of all, abortions by the tens of millions. Tens of millions of babies murdered in the womb. Tens of millions of babies murdered in the womb. Murdered. 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 Millions of children murdered in the womb. All the result of contraception. All the results of contraception. All the result of contraception. How pro-life are you? How pro-life are you? How pro-life are you? How many souls? How many souls? How many souls? How many souls have been damned for all eternity because of contraception? Every Planned Parenthood every drop of blood at the abortion chambers, every pro-choice sign, every March for Life, all of it, all of it, all of it, all of it, all of it can trace its roots to the diabolical evil of contraception. Stop this. Stop this. Immediately. Immediately. Stop this. We must stop this. We must stop this. We must stop this. Immediately. Immediately. Immediately following the 1930 Lambeth Conference, which allowed contraception, Pope Pius XI responded with his encyclical Costi Canubi, restating the Catholic Church's long-standing teaching on the sanctity of the Marriage Act and condemning contraception. Nearly 40 years later, in 1968, Pope Paul VI again condemned contraception in his encyclical Humanae Vitae. Are you pro-birth or are you pro-life? Pro-birth, pro-life, there is a difference. There is a difference. There is a difference. There's a difference. There is a difference. How pro-life are you? How pro-life are you? 90%. 90%. 90%. 90% of all Christians have used a form of contraception. How pro-life are we? How pro-life are we? How pro-life are we? How pro-life are we? I thought. I thought. I thought. I thought Christians were pro-life. How pro-life are are you? How pro-life are you? How pro-life are you? A 2003 Guttmacher Institute study revealed that an increase in contraceptive use had direct correlation to the increase in the number of abortions. They studied multiple countries, including the United States, Denmark, Singapore, and South Korea. Is abortion just the backup plan when contraception fails? It's a fair question. It's a fair question. It's a fair question. It's a fair question. How pro-life are you? How pro-life are you? How pro-life are you? How pro-life are you? It's no surprise that the evil of contraception has poisoned nearly all of Christianity. The protection of the Holy Spirit was granted to only one church. One church. One church. One church. The only church Jesus Christ built. The church built upon the rock of St. Peter, the Holy Catholic Church. If you stand against abortion, you must. You must. You must. You must stand against contraception. The Holy Catholic Church was in the beginning, is now, and shall ever be pro-life. Are you?